What's up guys, BTBS here, welcome back to another episode of Terraria. I am, just as I promised last time, getting ready to fight this boss. Ah, get away from the explodey. And uh, because I have no way of breaking through that, I think maybe the meteorite stuff can break through it. Oh, a meteorite landed as well. Crap, there he is, there's the boss. That giant thing going across the bottom of the screen there is the boss. He has, uh, oh god, he's back. He did disappear for a second. I should take this opportunity and shoot him. I wonder if I have any potions. Nope. So, he is a massive worm-type enemy. And uh, he can do a lot of damage to you if you don't move out of his way quickly. Which I did not. There we go. What you really want to do is wait for him to go past you. Keep an eye on where his head is because... You could easily be slashing halfway down him when his head comes back to slice you in the bollocks. Just like that. So a very easy method of fighting him is outside. Because you can pretty much... He's like a short sleeve magician out there. You can see what's up his sleeves. Because you can always see him, basically. And also, if you have a hunter potion, then you can... Um, you can see where he is underground. He lights up any caverns he might travel through, sort of thing. Oh god, there's three of them. So these guys are like, um... These guys do what worms don't do, but everybody says worms do. Which is, if you kill one, if you cut one in half, then you get two worms. Which isn't true. But, for these guys it is. If you, when, when you kill one, uh, when you kill a part of him, say like halfway down, he splits into two worms. And then when you do that again, they split into two worms. And they will continue to split until they are um, all dead via lo loss of health. Or are no longer uh, three blocks long, I believe. Man, he moved fast. So it's nice to have a good DPS weapon. Um... Anything like the ball and flail that you can pick up from in here? There's a, an item that's a, it's basically a giant spiky ball on the end of a chain. And if you can get that from breaking one of the shadow orbs, then um, that is one of the perfect items for fighting him. Because all you have to do is basically deploy the weapon and wait. Because he will just go through it and every time a part of him goes through it, that part will take damage. So that is an extremely effective way of killing him, or letting him kill himself. I mean, fuck, it's almost assisted suicide at that point. Woohoo, not getting me. He's going to come down about here, I reckon. Damn it, he's going to come up. Oh, no, it's got to go down. Up from over here. There he is. And here he comes. Yes, that's him beaten. So uh, he's not actually that hard to beat. And I picked up a stack, at least an entire stack of Demonite Ore. And now here's the interesting thing. Each world that spawns is either going to have Corruption or Crimson. Uh, assume you've got a Corruption world, which this is. Um, you are almost guaranteed enough orbs to fight this guy several times. There's another orb right there. Uh, I can't guarantee there's going to be you know, another three orbs, but I can guarantee there's going to be at least three in a world, and um, there's usually somewhere between six and nine, is from what I've found. And because uh, I happen to have two large uh, places full of corruption in this world, i got another deadly musket, it actually gives me a lot more chances of fighting him. And if you use all the orbs in the world, say you start fighting him and he kills you and then he despawns because that's what bosses in this game do. Uh, if you want to fight him again, all you need to do is craft his spawn item, which is extremely easy, easy to craft. All you need is the rotten flesh, I think it's called, that these every enemy in this area drops and some vial powder, which comes from the mushrooms. So there's these mushrooms on the surface, in fact pretty much anywhere in this biome, and then you just craft them, it's the rotten chunks they drop. 
and then you, you just craft the mushrooms into powder and then at an altar craft the powder and the mushrooms together to form uh, worm food I believe it is and that will spawn him so you can fight him again and you know as with all bosses he is a good source of money because he has drops he's a great source of uh, equipment if you actually you know aren't past that level yet and I think what I needed to make the armor was these shadow scales which he also drops so when fighting the Eater of Worlds that was his name by the way the Eater of Worlds um, each part of him drops stuff Ooh, a band of star power okay you know what fuck off die and clay and wood I want that band of star power now I don't have enough space to fight him again straight away so what I'm actually gonna do uh, I I'm going to deploy my piggy bank. Yay. Just put that down there. Stick the piggy bank on top. Come on, piggy bank. Go down. Fuck that guy. And then I'm just going to stick a bunch of stuff. I'm going to keep the aglet on me. Water leaf, sand, arrows. Screw you. Corrupt seeds, acorns, stars. I'm just going to make a bit of room in my inventory. You know how it goes. So that increases my maximum mana by 20. Nice. I could see how that would be a useful thing to keep around. Especially if you were a mage. I mean, I don't tend to play a mage on this game. But I've played with some mage stuff and it's cool. There's actually a golden chest down here. <gasps> cloud in a bottle. Okay, okay. Cloud in a bottle I've been waiting for. For so long. I can double jump. That's right, I got a double jump. I cannot believe I didn't pick one of those up sooner. I'm so glad to have it though. So there's one of the uh, mobility items I've been complaining about not having is some kind of double jump. Because let's face it, every game needs a double jump. Doo -doo -doo. And this should be the third one. Oh, I got the ball of hurt. I'm actually going to try and use that if I can find it. There it is. So all I need to do is get through him to a good position up here. Preferably somewhere where I've already lit up. And then, so the ball of hurt is ball and chain type weapon. Very, very simple to use. All you have to do is hold down. When you, Originally when you first use it, he uh, throws it. But if you just hold it, he will just keep the weapon out. And uh, then you just have to get the Eater of Dicks over there to go through it. It does some fairly decent damage as well. And if you do say, like, stand right behind him and then throw it through multiple parts, he can take a lot of damage very quickly. So I'm just going to deploy it here and then just leave it out. In fact, I had it in the perfect position, but I got knocked. No, I didn't. I just walked out of the way because I'm an idiot. Here we go. So I may take a bit of damage doing this, but every piece of him that goes through it takes damage. So that is a very effective strategy. Just stand still and let him kill himself. You see the amount of 15s and 20s just getting racked off on him. And I've, I've taken, like, 30 damage. So if you're looking for a really easy way of killing this boss... You really cannot find much easier than literally just tanking him like this and just holding the ball weapon out. Oh, look, it's literally just hanging below me and anything that comes up to me is just walking into it because it's an idiot. And of course, if you keep the weapon held out, then you can, um, you can walk around and it acts on gravity and swings around with you. So I'm actually, I actually need healing, so I'm just going to walk away for a couple of seconds. Because I don't want to die. It's very unlikely I will. I just didn't want to. I didn't want there to be any chance of it. So yeah, if you're looking for a lazy boss fight, a couple hundred health and some decent armor. I mean, if I had better armor or an iron skin potion, this would be even easier. Because he would literally do one damage a hit. Whereas he'd be taking, you know, 15, 20 times that damage from me. Should position myself again. 
There's not much of him left now. See, I get very bored just doing nothing, and, then, and I'm recording, so I, um, I can't just stand still and wait for him to go through me. I have to keep jumping around, but that's not advisable. He's actually, he was just down here. And this one is about to kill himself. Dead. And this one's going to come across. Come up. Yeah, see, I can spot you in the dark, mate. He actually totally missed me, just went over me. Oh, he gotten smart. Come on, come play with my giant dangly bollock. That's it. Come on, Dave. Come on. You know you want it. You want it, you filthy whore. Come on, come on. Man, this is like the worst fishing ever. Just holding a bollock out. Right, fine. I'm just going to wait for you to come up and then murder you with bullets. Where are you? There you are. And you're dead again. Woo. So, yeah. Really, really easy boss to beat. If you know what you're doing. He actually dropped a trophy. That's cool. Nice. And I got... Like another two stacks of the... Um, the, sorry, I have the two stacks of the Demon Eye and more Shadow Scales, which I believe the Shadow Scales on the Demon Eye stuff are like the wood for them tools, something like that. By the way, you may be wondering what the hell is this ball following me around. The game has pets, basically, and this ball is a pet which will follow me and just give off light, so if I'm sitting somewhere dark, he gives off a purple light, and he's spawned via this Shadow Orb. Which uh, is one of the drops from the shadow orbs that you use to summon the boss. So let's uh, let's go home and see if we do actually have armor to be made out of this demonite ore now that we have the shadow scales as well. So just craft all of it. The uh, bars are almost always worth the same amount as they're the equivalent amount of ores that it takes to make them. So you don't really need to hold back on making um, armor. Okay, you can actually move the shadow orb up and down with up and down. Let's have a look. Ah, yes. So that is really hard to see. There's a bow there. So we have shadow helmet, increased melee speed, increased melee speed, increased melee speed. 676, which is much better than this. So... Yes, it takes shadow scales. I thought so. So I'm going to make myself a set of shadow armor. Ah, crap. I can't believe I actually just did that. Hey, mate, do you want some shadow armor? 60 silver. Tired ass bitch. And move out of my way. Move. I need to access my chest. To get those out. Always make sure you're clipped on the right thing. Shadow greaves. Yes. So I'm going to do what I always do, I'm going to see how good the armour is first, and I'm just chucking those out by doing this, by literally you pick them up and then right click outside of the space, drop them, and they'll go straight into my inventory, uh, there, there and there. So I'm just going to do this to see, what you guys know the drill, I put the armour on over the cactus to see how it looks, that is quite nice, oh, there's a motion blur effect. I have a sh I have like a control I snake following me around. Yeah, there's a reference and a joke for all you computer nerds. Control I snakes. Yeah. That looks badass. I might have actually found an armor I like better than the cactus armor. Let's see. Yeah. It looks like uh, the thing from uh, the Chronicles of Riddick. When that bloke is using the necromantic powers. So that's pretty damn cool. Greaves, chest, and helmet. No longer wearing the platinum. So I might actually have to keep the shadow stuff on. Let's see, we get 7% increased melee speed. And the set bonus is 15% increased movement speed. So we don't get any... We actually lose defense. Five six five six seven six. So they have 
three extra defense. I think we actually lose like one defense. Or did we lose that because of the item we unequipped so we could put the cloud on the bottle on? We're missing two defense from the aglet. Hmm. Okay, I have no idea what to do about all that. But um, yeah, that is how easy that boss is to farm. And in fact, just to show you, fuck off. Seriously, Tony, you're really starting to piss me off. And it's not great. It's fucking annoying. Yeah, Tony, how do you feel about that? Using your own advert to mock you, you bastard. In fact, come here, Tony. Uh, take the deadly musket. Nice. I oh, so that one actually had a higher crit chance. That was why we were critting so often. Uh, I want to keep the obsidian skull and the orb. The workbench goes there. No. That goes there. Uh, the rotten chunks. I want to pick up all my rotten chunks. 90 of them there. And the vile mushrooms, which I need to craft into the vili powder. How's that done? I can't remember. Do we need a smelter? Leather? How do you make leather? Oh, the rotten chunks, yeah. I went through that last time, didn't I? What? Oh, epstone block. I have epstone block on me? Sorry, I'm really getting distracted now. I can't remember what it is we need to craft the vile mushrooms at. Crafting, vile mushrooms. Uh, bottle. So we actually need a potion stand to craft the vile mushrooms into vile powder. And the vile powder removes the hallow. The hallow is sort of like a harder version of corruption that spawns after a in-game event. And we need 30 vile powder and 15 chunks to make the worm food. And it's crafted at a demon altar. We can also make poison knives. Hmm. Do we have 30? Of course we don't have 30. Fuck's sake. Oh, hang on. We do have 30. And I have that demon altar just underneath my house. Let's get that out. I think it's just down here. Yes, there it is. There's my demon altar. So... Create the worm food. Yeah. All manner of creations up in this bitch. Let's just get our asses out of here. And what I actually think a great place to fight him would be um, on where I've got my tree farm. And, you know, because I think with the worm food you can summon him outside of the corruption. I'm not actually 100% on that, so I'm going to have to find out by trying. No, you can't summon him outside the corruption. That's a shitter. Oh well. There's something down here that made me illuminate. Ooh. Harvest the mushrooms. Can make potions out of them. My mushrooms. Oh, you know what I didn't check? is um, making a pick out of that demonite. So picks generally take 12 ingots to make, I think. Yeah, Nightmare Pickaxe, able to mine Hellstone. Uh, yeah, 65% pickaxe power, which is better than the golden pickaxe. So I would assume the platinum pickaxe would be 60%? And then the Nightmare Pickaxe is 65. That makes sense to me. 5% increase each time. And I got large, which makes literally just makes the sprite larger. Yeah, it, it looks a little larger to me. It's kind of hard to tell. Because, I mean, the largest you get is, like, not much. Let's put it that way. But we now have a faster pickaxe. And... Better armor, increased movement speed, increased melee speed. Oh, we actually have a. The big improvement is from the. Uh, the set bonus is increased movement speed, not melee speed. 
I was looking at it the wrong way around earlier. So you know what I think? I think now that we have really good equipment, or at least I believe the best equipment I can get for now, I need to go mining and get lower in the world. So my mining pipe only goes so far, and then that only goes so far, because um, I needed the obsidian skull. The, I, the only reason I actually went down as far as I did was so I could get the obsidian skull. Because the obsidian skull is super useful. There's rope over there. That's funny, there's a massive chunk of rope missing at the top and there's a bit of rope sitting down the side. And it's almost like, oh, someone's just transplanted my rope. So, I've got some bombs on me, actually. So, you know, in case you guys forgot what my mining technique is. It's pretty much just this. Keep mining, boys. We're bound to hit gold eventually. Even though gold isn't really what I'm after. I actually just want to get lower. Um, you know what? I uh, don't have any rope on me. Which is strange, because I normally carry a load of rope. I normally carry three nines of rope, just because. Hey, a dead goldfish! Oh yeah, that is how you make room, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, I hear so much cobweb being removed. <gasps> I found a spider cave! Oh, this is awesome! Spider caves are like incredibly rare. And um, they actually have an item which I've never seen, but so badly want. So I have to hope that my spider cave has a chest in it. So this is, uh, this pick, Nightmare Pickaxe, is pretty damn fast when it comes to mining stuff. Which is nice, very, very nice. Oh, yep, definitely have a spider cave. Wall creepers, I believe, only spawn in spider caves. And I think the crimson... The uh, the opposite to the how the opposite to the thing has its own version of them. The um, the opposite to the corruption has its own version of them, like its uh, its own special type. What have we got here? Iron. Well, I mean, I only wanted to get rid of the water so I could stand in here and break that. Also, the amount of cobwebs in this place is crazy. It's also pretty damn full of enemies as well. Get back, you creeper! <gasps> yes, we got a chest! We got a chest! We got a chest! We got a chest! Now, I think the item that I really want is a 100% chance in one of these chests. So let's have a look. Web Slinger! Yes, we got it. The Web Slinger is <laughs> it's crazy it's the only grappling hook that has eight separate tendrils one two three four five six seven eight and because it has eight separate tendrils you can deploy all eight of them separately and you can use it to dr octopus your way around town like this oh this is so cool i've actually never even found a uh, spider cave before Oh man, this my Let's Play world is so good! It's got so much stuff in it that I've never had! Excellent! And inside here we also have some dynamite and some ores, which is always nice to have. But I'm so, so excited about the whole, you know, the web slinger chest. Damn it. It's not very long though, which is a shame. And there's also so much cobweb in one of these places that uh, you can make so much money just by crafting the cobweb into silk and selling that. That's easily going to make me a good, probably a few gold, I would say. Oh god, look at all the spiders in there. So if you don't like spiders, I probably should have warned you about what was coming up. But, um, yeah. 
Anyone who needs a warning for a video game, you're gonna get fucked. Basically. It's like people who get motion sickness from that Incredible Hulk game. I mean, personally, I suffer terribly from motion sickness. Like, I can't even go on a, uh, like a, over an hour long car journey without basically throwing up everywhere. Yeah, I know, you guys totally wanted to know that, didn't you? Just like uh, if you saw my thing where I went to the gadget show. That was like uh, an hour and a half bus journey. I think I threw up twice on that. But seriously, getting like motion sick or basically having video games affect you in a negative way. I mean, maybe not every negative way because, I mean, let's face it, we've all played too much Bejeweled and, you know, just seen colour combinations when we close our eyes. But that's normal. That's totally normal. But people who actually get, like, motion sickness from the Incredible Hulk game and shit like that, how? How? How do you even, like... Oh, the real question is how the fuck do you dress yourself in the morning? Or does someone have to help you with that? No offence. Right, there's plenty of slush around. Uh... Yay, lots of slush. So what should I do now? I'm thinking it's probably about time to end the episode. Spider cactus man, spider cactus man. Does whatever a spider cactus can. Oh god, could you imagine a spider cactus? Just a cactus that can swing web, sling le webs. That would be horrifying. Ugh, I look like some sort of monster. I look like I'm about to entice some... Teenage virgin into my web and just be like, ah. Because, yeah, that, that's the noise that massive monsters make. Woo! I am so inefficient at climbing! Oh man, that is so cool to finally pick this up. I've known about this item for ages, but never even found a, sp found a spider cave. So, you know what, guys? I am going to end this episode here. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. I know I have. Yes. Um, I'm probably going to do a little bit of um, hole digging uh, before I start the next episode. So, uh, yes, I will see you next time. Thank you for watching. Thank you for making, uh, making this series so fun. Because, you know, it wouldn't be as fun if I didn't have you guys telling me what I did wrong and just generally being dicks to me but in a good way uh, so yes yeah, thanks for watching guys I will see you next time peace out I was going to try and say that like how a spider would say it and the only thing that came to mind was hissing like a snake which obviously isn't a spider anyway peace out <laughs>